In this question, our first task is to determine the particle's speed at a time of 10 seconds. So if we look at the graph, we can see along this segment here that from t is equal to 0 seconds to t is equal to 10 seconds, we have an acceleration that is equal to 2 meters per second squared. So we're just going to write that interval down. Again, that interval was between 0 and 10 seconds. And during that time interval, the acceleration, according to the graph, is 2 meters per second squared. Now, we also know that the particle started from rest. So this means that the initial velocity of the particle is 0 meters per second. Now, one more piece of information we know is that if we're starting at 0 seconds and ending at 10 seconds, then our time interval, of course, is just 10 seconds. So with the acceleration, initial velocity, and time, we can easily calculate the final velocity of the particle at the 10 second mark. And that's the first thing we're going to do by using this equation right here. So this equation tells us that the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus acceleration multiplied by time. Let's go ahead and plug in the stated quantities. And once we simplify the right hand side of this equation, we're going to end up with 20. When we multiply meters per second squared by seconds, then one of the seconds will cancel in the numerator along with another of the seconds in the denominator. That gives us meters per second. So this is the correct answer to the first part of this question. The particle is traveling at 20 meters per second after 10 seconds of travel. We can go on to the diagram and just make an annotation of that fact. So at this point right here, we know that the velocity of the particle is equal to 20 meters per second. But we're not done because we also have to figure out how fast the particle is moving at a time of 20 seconds. Now, before we can do that, it's important to look at the interval from 10 to 15. Let's talk about that interval between 10 and 15 seconds and ask yourself, well, what is the acceleration of the particle during that interval? And if we look carefully, we can see that the acceleration is actually zero during that part of the interval. So we'll make a note of that. Now, since the acceleration is zero meters per second squared, the particle is neither speeding up nor slowing down. So that means that if the velocity at 10 seconds was 20 meters per second, then the velocity at 15 seconds will also be 20 meters per second. Again, it has not sped up, it has not slowed down, so it's still traveling at 20 meters per second. Let's keep that idea in mind as we examine the next time interval right here between 15 seconds and 20 seconds. Once again, we want to ask ourselves, what is the acceleration during that time interval? We can see the acceleration is equal to negative 3 meters per second squared. We can see that the amount of time that has passed between 15 and 20 seconds is just 5 seconds, of course. And then if we treat 15 seconds as the initial and 20 seconds as the final, then this velocity that we marked at 15 seconds is actually going to be an initial velocity. So the initial velocity at the 15 second mark is equal to 20 meters per second. And we're trying to calculate the final velocity. Let's just kind of make a little bit of room here for ourselves. We're gonna be calculating the final velocity at the 20 second mark. And so to do that, we're gonna use the same equation, the initial plus acceleration times time. We're gonna plug in these three values right here. And we'll make a little bit more room here. And when we simplify the right-hand side of that part of the equation, we're going to have 20 minus 15, so we get 5 meters per second. So this is the correct answer for the velocity at 20 seconds. And then again, we had computed the velocity at 10 seconds. So part A is complete, but we also have to calculate the distance traveled in the first 20 seconds. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and summarize some of the data that we've acquired thus far. So here is a summary of the three different time intervals. You might want to pause the video and just make sure that these numbers make sense in light of the graph. What we're going to do is calculate the distance traveled by the particle within each of the three time intervals. And to calculate that distance, we'll use the following equation. And this is one of the equations we've learned in this chapter from one dimensional motion. We'll do the first calculation together here, and then we'll do the other two on your own. So for the initial velocity, you're going to plug in zero, the time interval for that first segment was 10 seconds, and then we have 1 half times the acceleration times the time squared. Don't forget to square that time. When you work that out on your calculator, you're going to get a value of 100, and since that's a distance, we have that in meters. So that is the distance traveled for the first time interval, but we have to do a similar calculation for the other two time intervals. So we'll pause the video. You can set up those calculations and see if you get the following answers. 
So there are the three distances traveled by the particle, and we want the total distance for the entire 20 second interval. So all we have to do is add these three distances together. And when you do that, you're going to get 262.5 meters. And then we can round that to three significant figures as 263 meters. So this is the final answer to the question.